أهلا بكم أعزائنا المشاهدين في حلقة هذا الأسبوع من القراءة مع حلا اليوم حلا جابت لنا قصة حلوة خلينا نشوف إيش هي أهلا حلا كيفك؟ السلام عليكم كويسة إيش القصة اللي جبت لنا إياها اليوم؟ uh, the, 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 the name of the story is called Dahlia uh, It's a very very good book that I used to read with my dad What's the story about? Um, well, the story is about a little girl with her doll and sort of how she got it. And I think the moral is like, um, you know, before you judge anything, try try it. And then mm -hmm. you can judge it after you try it. But just be kind of open-minded when you first get it. And don't, don't judge anything before you try it. It's like a... Old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Interesting. Very ironic considering we're reading a book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take it over. It was a beautiful blue morning. Carlo and Bruno were making mixed and how it's never touched. There was a package for Charlotte. She died with her dog. The piece of mouth was turned. She was dressed in linen and lace and both of her children. Her home was covered with thin blood. Still, Charlotte found a note. Here, Charlotte. I saw a spell and thought of you. Tell your mother I'm coming home. Love, and Edmund. Charlotte didn't have a doll. Charlotte didn't want a doll. She carried the doll upstairs, thinking at any moment it might break. In Charlotte's room, among the dragonflies and boxes of beetles and found birds' nests, the doll looked out of place. We like digging in the dirt and climbing trees, Charlotte confessed to the doll. No tea parties, no being pushed around in frilly pramps. You'll have to get used to the way we do it here. The doll looked concerned, but said nothing. Bruno and the doll were, low were lowered down in a basket from the bedroom window. Charlotte climbed after them. They finished making mud cakes. The doll tasted one. She seemed to like it. Charlotte and Bruno made boats from sticks and leaves and sailed them down the stream. The doll looked on with pleasure, Charlotte thought. To Charlotte and Bruno's surprise, the doll took fishing very well. When Charlotte wiped the doll's face dry, her painted mouth blurred into a soft smile. They dug in the flower bed, planting many small stones. You look like one of Mother's flowers, Dahlia. That's a perfect name for you. Dahlia looked back brightly. Dahlia eagerly joined in Bruno's favorite game of toss up in the air and land in a heap. Her cheeks and chin grew brown and warm. The exercise seemed to do her good. Dahlia sat next to Bruno in his wagon. And Charlotte took them for a ride. You're not jealous, are you, Bruno? whispered Charlotte. Bruno didn't mind at all. At the top of the hill, a cluster of boys stood with their wagons, ready for a race. We'll race too, said Charlotte. With a doll, snickered George. Dressed in lace, snorted Paul. 
She's braver than all of you, said Charlotte. Dahlia raised her chin slightly, ready for the challenge. One, two, and three. The race began. Dahlia sat in front, bumping up and down, hair blown back. Dahlia, Bruno, and Charlotte accepted the grand prize of a cracked but handsome cup. After saying thank you, they headed home. Oh, splendid day. They still had time to climb Charlotte's favorite tree. Up they went, Bruno in one pocket, Dahlia in the other, higher than they really should have gone. Dahlia sat far out on the branch to have a better view. Perhaps it was the wind. Maybe Dahlia sneezed. She leaned too far over and fell down, down, and landed hard on the ground. Oh, sorry. Charlotte and Bruno climbed down. There she lay, lace and ribbons clumped, crumple, crumpled and torn. She smiled a little, not wanting to worry Charlotte too much. Charlotte grasped Dahlia and held her close. Poor Dahlia, Charlotte wept. My poor Dahlia. Charlotte ran all the way home, Bruno cradling Dahlia in the wagon bumping, bumping behind. What to do? Charlotte got out bandages and a bowl of warm water and plenty of towels. She bathed Dahlia and bandaged her arms and legs and put her to bed. Bruno held Dahlia's hand while Charlotte read softly from her favorite book. Finally, Dahlia's eyes opened. She felt good as new. Charlotte brushed Dahlia's hair and straightened her dress. She brushed Bruno, too. And I'd better do the same. Downstairs, a door opened. There were voices in the hall. Charlotte, your Aunt Edme is here. Quickly, it's time to go down, whispered Charlotte. Aunt Edme smiled too. Oh, sorry, skip to page. There was Aunt Edme, frail hands folded in her lap. She was wearing lace and linen and silk ribbons, looking just the way Dahlia had in her box that morning. Charlotte, dear, how do you like your new doll? asked Aunt Edme. Bruno and I like her very much. She has become our best friend, said Charlotte. May I see the doll? asked Aunt Edme. Charlotte held Dahlia up for Aunt Edme to see. She was muddy and torn, her, hand tangled, her hair tangled in knots. But her face was softened into a sweet, warm smile. Aunt Edme studied the doll, then... Aunt Edme smiled, too. When I saw your doll in a shop window, I thought she needed to be put out in the sunshine, played with and loved. I knew that this is just what you would do for her. 
I only wish I could make mud pies and be tossed in the air, but I'm too old. Aunt Edme kissed Charlotte and Dahlia on the cheek. She shook Bruno's paw. From then on, Dahlia made mud cakes and climbed trees and rode with Bruno and was loved by Charlotte forever after. Thank you so much, Hala. That was very nice. Excuse me? Thank you so much. That was very nice. Yeah. So how how do you how did you pick the story? How do you pick the stories you read to us? Um, well, I have this big box of stories and I read most of them. I just look through and pick mm -hmm. out I, th I think were really nice to read, my favorite ones. And I picked them, practiced reading them. All right. Thank you so much. This was, this was a very enjoyable story. And see you next week. See you next week. Shukran, Azza, and Mushahideen, and Tabatikum, and Rakum, and Al Hakal Kadim, and Usbu Al Kadim.